Borland, creating products that provide solutions so that your air conditioning and refrigeration needs are not only met, but exceeded. Offer the highest quality products, innovative solutions, and unparalleled support in the market. Well, it is 10.20 in the morning. I'm sitting outside this very fine gate right here. Homeowner's not here yet. She's supposed to be here about 20 minutes ago, but that's okay. That's okay. It's like going to the doctor's office. At least I had a chance to listen to the new Building Performance podcast, Building HVAC Science, Bill Spoon, and the new Tool Pros podcast with Brent and BK. So that's pretty good stuff. You guys need to check that out. It's good to have something to do on these long drives. I just had a 30-minute drive to Harrells, North Carolina, and now the gate's closed, so I have a little bit more extra time. So if we ever get inside here, I'll show you guys what's going on or try to figure it out anyway. This is a breaker we changed last time. Nice warm discharge. We're going to hook up to it and see what it's looking like. So we have a 39 degree suction line which gives us right about 4 degrees of superheat which is definitely going to be too low. Suction pressure is at the 35 degree saturation mark which puts us around 70 degrees for turning our dry bulb temperature calculation at a 35 degree delta. That's going to be pretty close actually. So we'll have to see airflow first of all see what our temperature split is as well. We have 250 pounds on the high side, puts us about 85 degrees there, and we're about 10 to 15 degrees cooler than that ambient. So that might be a little bit low of a split for the outdoor delta, but we need to get some airflow measurements to confirm, and I'm gonna check these run capacitors as well again. We have 78.9, around 79 degrees, which gives us around around 6 or 7 degrees of subcooling here based on a saturation of around 85. So we do have subcooling, just not a whole lot, but definitely not an excessive amount that you would see during an overcharge. Guys, so the indoor wet bulb temperature of the return is 65. So what we're going to do is a target superheat formula. 65 times 3, that's wet bulb times 3, equals minus the constant of 80, minus our temperature outside, which is 78. And then we're gonna divide that by two, and we have our target superheat, which is 18.5. So let's go back to number one, 38.6. You can pretty much realize we're not gonna have that target superheat, right? So pretty much one or two degrees of superheat. We have a contactor that's going to go So nothing I can do about it. Blower's on high speed. Removing charge would take away all the subcooling, so that's not going to work either. If we put a TXV on it to get some superheat back regulated, we'd end up dropping the suction pressure into the freezing area, because right now we're at just 36 or so as far as saturation. So if we put a TXV on, it's going to back that suction pressure off to get a higher superheat, and we're actually going to be closer to freezing, so we're more likely to start freezing, ironically. So that's where we're at. Temperature split was in the 20s. Target temperature split would be below 20, near 17 or 18 degrees, maybe even a little bit less than that. I just did kind of a rough estimate based on the humidity inside and the wet bulb. But we're definitely going to have a low airflow situation here. So that call originally was because it was warm in the house. But once you ask the people some information, you get a little bit better picture. Five ton system upgraded from a three-ton system. Now I agree, the three-ton was probably too small for a triple-wide trailer. Typically they're four tons, three and a half, four-ton machines. But this house went to a five. So you kind of wonder if it was overkill, didn't bring that relative humidity down. And what happens is that that machine runs at shorter intervals and humidity doesn't get taken out of the air. So seeing that humidity doesn't get taken out of the air, you always have that lower temperature split. You always have that higher latent load. But if you leave the machine off all day and then turn it back on, it's going to, have to take a whole bunch of humidity out of the air. So that's what this machine had to do. They, they'd come work on the house because it's empty right now and people are moving in. It's going to be a rental property for them. And it has to take all that latent heat out of the air by condensing it across the evaporator coil. And every time you have to do that, depending on how much latent load there is, it's going to lower that temperature split and cause that sensible cooling level to go down. Just remember when you're cooling, you have a split between sensible 
latent cooling. The higher the relative humidity, the more latent cooling there's going to be, the less sensible. And all that means for sensible is that the regular temperature. Like if it's 75 inside, we're talking sensible temperature. Latent, we're talking about that water in the air. So you got to think about those things. So I set it down. It actually was set on, I see it was 72 when I got there. I ran it 71 when I left. So I told her, let's leave it on 72. Husband's coming back later in the day to work on the house, getting ready for Thursday when people move in. So if it's, you know, temperature's going up, out of control, at that point, when he comes back later today, we'll have an issue. But I'm thinking once it runs, maybe that's him now calling. Who could it be? Well, guys, I'll see you on the next.